minutes ago, Erica pulled up as only she can right outside the Tamron Hall studio. Oh my goodness, my goodness. This is a daytime television exclusive ahead of her mesmerizing Vogue magazine cover out next month. As the cover says, she is radical, relevant, and real. Fusing jazz, soul, funk, and hip hop, Erica created her signature sound over two decades ago. Her debut album, Baduism, launched a global movement. One of many reasons, by the way, one of many reasons Rolling Stone magazine just named her on their list of top 200 singers of all time. Over her 26 year career, she's earned 59 nominations, resulting in four Grammys, three BET Soul Train Awards, plus the prestigious Legend Award and two NAACP Image Awards. And she starred in the Oscar nominated movie Cider House Rules, which was incredible. And and I'm out of breath if that wasn't enough. Erica Badu might be the most famous doula in the world, having helped bring more than 50 babies into the world. Most recently, R&B superstar Summer Walker's baby. And listen, oh my goodness, it's hot in here. And listen, I didn't wear this white suit for nothing. Because when it comes to style, she is equally singular, inspiring designers like Tom Ford and international luxury brands like Givenchy. Please welcome, as she put it, the one with the hazel eyes that'll hypnotize, the incomparable Erica Badu! this morning we know you do live concerts live interviews this is a live daytime unfiltered real raw relevant interview with you it is it is you just arrived last night i did hot off the plane you went to the shows hitting up new york fashion week right when an icon attends fashion events uh-huh everybody's looking at you mm. sometimes more than they're looking at the runway <laughs> sometimes <laughs> The expectations when you arrive, that's you with Tiana Taylor. <laughs> uh, uh, unpack the look for me. I see gold, I see, <laughs> what is this? Oh! <laughs> it didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to, but Tom Brown, this is Tom Brown's yeah. show, and Tom Brown is known for creative, uh, theatrical looks. So in his runway look, the, the models had these little rollers, yeah. but I think I did too much. You did? So. <laughs> Cause so. I end up looking like bag lady. <laughs> Listen, but you're, that's what we love. <laughs> you, you, you take it seriously because you've talked about your fashion being a political statement and how what we wear can be a weapon, but then you are also able to look at that picture and say, I don't know if that's what I was going that's for funny. exactly. <laughs> that's fun. It's fun. <laughs> uh, Vogue magazine, yeah. uh, this article, this big article that's coming out, mm -hmm. is comparing this chapter in your life. It's a beautiful picture. They're, they are comparing this chapter in your life to Grace Jones and Bowie. There was a quote, okay. it said, the four-time Grammy winner singer is one of those rare, rabble-rousing creatures who orbits the pop culture universe mm. and meets the moment entirely on her own terms. Hey. What are your terms today? What are your terms now at this chapter in your life? Um, my terms are personal and, and they're for me and they are, if it is for you, you shall have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because we know that you changed your name well before you became Erica Badu. You sure. were a young woman in Texas, our home sure. state, uh -huh. and you changed your name. It 
translates in Arabic to manifesting truth? Yes. Did you manifest this life? Did you manifest where you are and who you are? I think so. Um, in some way, I wrote down what I wanted what when I was write? about 14, that I would be whatever I wanted to be with the help of the Most High. When you wrote whatever I want it to be, I, I will be whatever I want to be, did you have something in mind? Because you were in dance, you were featured in an article as a kid. I, I have a quote with your mother writing that when she watched you perform, <laughs> <laughs> I think the article was something hey, like- Queenie. <laughs> Queenie, that, your mother is Queenie. <laughs> she goes by the nickname Queenie. You said in the article that's because when people meet her, they forget about you. Because she's the queen. The queen. So, your, your mother talked about your roots, and she... Actually, I want to show this video. There's an adorable video that you posted on Instagram of the legacy of women in your yes. life. Let's play this. <laughs> Mama. Come on, Mama. And that's Queenie. Come on, Mama. Uh, Queenie said she... Oh, and that's your grandma! <laughs> yeah, that's right! <laughs> that has extra special meaning now. <sighs> yeah. Thank you. That's Thelma Gibson. Yesterday was her birthday. Yeah. Yeah. When you see that, what do I feel? I feel like my mother was a, an improvement on her mother's design. Mm -hmm. And I am an improvement on my mother's design. And I see Puma being an improvement on mine. What, you finna cry? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, have you met me? Yes! These space tears. <laughs> they are real. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I see it as... And I'm speaking with a lisp because I have these teeth in. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see it as my grandmother's opportunity to manifest the parts of herself that she didn't get a chance to through now Puma. Because we're always... That mitochondria gene is always who you are. It's the permanent. And it manifests in different bodies, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And I am a living, breathing example of who she is and her oh, mother's yeah. Yeah. and her mother's. Yeah. You write a lot about growing up with this circle of strong women, mm -hmm. whether it was your mom, your grandmother, godmothers. I mean, we, yes. we grew up in a part of the country, people say, that's my play mama, right. your cousins. <laughs> we know this language because right. so often, as was the case with you, your father wasn't there daily. He wasn't, yeah. Neither was mine. Yeah. Um, and then you end up with a circle of women around you. Strong women. Strong women. Yeah. Um, who were not wealthy. Yeah. You were raised around educators. Yep. But they had such strong integrity and expectation. Yes. Yes, they did. Um, we didn't have a lot of, um, I guess, patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, it was pretty much in the household, do what I say, mm -hmm. you know, because they understood that they were also still evolving and growing. And to, you know, play some pattern or rules or principles that they would eventually grow out of was a, a step that we skipped. Yeah. It was watch. watch, do what I say. Yeah. When you're in that structured environment as you were, because, you know, listen, the reality is they had to have those types of lives, right? Sure. Because that's, those were the rules. Yeah. You know, especially for black women. Mm -hmm. You gotta help take care of your family. You're yeah. the breadwinner, the bread baker, yes. and all of the roles in the middle. Yeah. So then out of her legacy comes Erica Free, because that was your first name, I believe, when you first right. jumped, 14 year old, uh, right? Right, it was a combination cousin. of my name and, and your, Free's name. And your cousin. So our group was called Erica Free. That was my first musical group. Erica yeah. Free. Mm -hmm. From the moment 
Erica Free was born, uh -huh. what do you think your mother thought was going to happen? Because if you're the continuation of her, Puma, what, is, what did you think she was, was she betting on this life? I don't know, but I, but I do know that she told me that I was the best. The best. Yeah, she said I was the best. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're the best one. You're so best one. just go on. You can do it, go on. You're the best one. You know, she would always say that, which helped me a lot and hurt me some, too, because I didn't know that I could lose oh. at one point, you know. And so when I learned that I could also lose, then I also, at that time, picked up the understanding that these losses are lessons. So, so it wasn't losing. 